Hello and welcome to. Today we're going to have a look at Microsoft Paint. Microsoft Paint is a lightweight image editor and it comes standard with your Windows installation. You may think that it is pretty useless, but it isn't actually because of its fact that it's lightweight. It means that small tasks are very easy to complete doing it. So let's have a look at it. So there's a few ways to access it. You can go through the menu or you can simply just search Paint and it pops up there. Oops, I have to type paint correctly. So that's paint. So if you open it here, let's go over the user interface first here. So up here is all your tools. Over here, you have the colors, Canadian your colors, and here you have your sizes. Here you have the shapes. Here you have the tools I was speaking of. So you have your pen, you have your paint bucket, you have your text tool, and you have your eraser and you have your color picker and you have your zoom tool. You have a few more things available as well, it's like pasting and copying images. You have a selection tool and then you can resize and rotate. So that's the main things. Then we can also go into the view. We can basically adjust the view in here. So that's uh, rulers and our guides and status bar and things like that. However, we're interested in going over these specific things individually. So you will notice we start out with a little canvas here. So we have a white canvas when you want your open paint. Down here you will notice the size. So this is when 532 pixels times 400 pixels. If I was to grab it here in the corner, you see that little square there, and pull it to that size, you see the number down here to go into 825. So that's your axis there. If you want to extend it the other way, you have it down here. You see the little arrow pointing up and down, extend it, and you can see the number going up and down there. So that's your vertical or horizontal. You can also grab it down here in the corner, and you will then be able to do horizontal and vertically at the same time, as you can see, like that. All right, so when does this become important? It becomes important if you have some an image and you only want like this size. Say you have an image that's you need to be 600 pixels wide, you can go like that, and you can then find 600 pixels like that. There's other ways to do it as well, as we'll go over in a bit. So that's how you resize. Right, so the next thing, once you actually have the canvas to work on, we sort of need something to work with. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at how to get something into paint. So if you go down in your browser, I'm just going to go to the site and search for a kitten. You can use whatever picture you want. So there's a few ways to get it into paint. You can either save it onto your computer and open it with paint, or you can also right click on it and you can click copy. I think in Chrome, um, in Google Chrome browser, it will say copy image. So the text might be a bit different, but it's the same concept. You can go back to your paint here. And then you can paste it in. So there's a few ways to paste it in. You can use the paste up here, or you can also do a control V. So that's your key down in um, be your left corner. So it's control, so C T I L. If you press that down and you press the V at the same time while holding the control key down, you see, you see the picture coming in here. All right, so we have a lovely kitten in here now. So as I said, if you notice over here, it's now marked. If I was to resize it here, it would try to resize the picture, not the canvas. So we would get an uneven proportional picture. Let me demonstrate it. So we get it like that, see? So it's basically stretching the image and squeezing it together. If I wanted to make the canvas smaller, I can click out here and you see the selection, the dotted line here goes away and we are back to what we had before and we can do it like this say I want this part of the picture there we go now I might want to want us to do that so I might want to undo it so what I can do is I can press that control key again and then can press the set key like that and to undo it what you also notice is up here in the paste if I paste here I get the image in again, so that's another way you can access it from. There's also a paste from, that would be you selecting something from your computer, so you get a folder from your computer to open, and then you can select an image to paste into it. 
into the working project. Now in uh, Paint you don't really have the transparency layers that you get on other editors like Photoshop and uh, Paint.net and things like that. However, you can still work with things in a similar fashion, somewhat. Not quite. There's a lot of things you can't do. However, it does have some features of it and that we're gonna go over in a bit. But you won't be able to just layer things once you work with it, you, once you let go of it after you've been working at it, what's gonna happen is that you can't really access that layer anymore if you can imagine it as that way. So say if I did this, selected it all and I did that by control A for selecting it all. If I did this like that, I won't be able to sort of click on a layer to get to it again. The only way I can do it is selecting it again and then resizing it. So I'm going to undo that. So that's a selection tool up here. You notice there's also other types of selection. Say I want to select a certain part. I can draw with doing this one. So you click on here and you click freeform. Say I want the kitten's head here. Just draw around it like this. And you notice when I have selection and I can now move that around. You see the arrows up and down and to the sides. So this pointing all direction it means that you can move it. I say, same applies as before. It's not really a layer as per se as you're working with. So once you let go of this by clicking out here, you don't have access to it anymore. You, you'll be drawing a new area. So keep that in mind. I'm just going to do this again. So that's it. The next thing we're going to have a look at, let's see, is down here, is the, just go over here, as I said, your control A is basically just select all, you get your whole image, and that's how you can do the resizing of it, like that. Right. So that's your selection tools. There is a few other ones, you can inverse your selection and so on, but, I mean, inversion, inverting your selection would be something like, say you select the eye, and then you can invert it so you get everything else than the eye when you move it. So you're keeping that in position. So you always should need that. Alright, so that's your selection tools. Alright, so the next thing we want to do is actually getting something into our canvas here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to a browser and we're going to find an image. You might have an image on your computer you can open. But let's do it through here first. So it I have searched for some kittens and um, I have found a lovely image of a kitten here so if I right click on it and you copy the picture so that's right click and copy if you're in Google Chrome it might say uh, copy image or something but I you should work out which one it is so if you go back to paint then what you can do is you can go up here where it says paste and you can click paste here like that and we get our image in Another way of doing it would be, so what I did there was Control c to undo. But another way to get your image in would be Control v so you key down in your left corner that says CTIL, which is your control key. You should hold that down and press the V key at the same time. You'll be able to paste it in like that. You will notice once we paste it in, we have a marked line around the picture. What I mean is, is that this is a selection, and it means that we've been we will be working with this area of the screen. So unlike before, uh, you saw that we pull these little cursors down here. If you were to do it now, we won't be resizing the canvas, but we'll be resizing the actual selection. So what that would do would, would mean that our little kitten here would be stretched. So let's have a look at that. If I did like that. Okay, we're gonna just squeeze it a bit together. You see that? So you can do that for them back. However, you're probably not interested in doing this because it's going to bring the picture out of proportion. But it might be useful in some cases. So I'm just going to undo it like that again, and then going to do Control V so we have our image again. However, as before we said we could resize it. What do we want to do that again? Well, what you can do is you can click out here, and you will notice that the mark line goes away, and our little markers here show up again. So if I was to pull that now. You should get the same thing as before, where we're resizing the image, and you will notice down here we have the size of the image again. 
So I'm just gonna undo that again. So that's resizing with the image, but say you can do control A again. So you control key and A, that marks everything. Or you can also do it through your select here. So mark everything. And then we can grab the image down here. And we could do something like this. Make the image smaller. However, while we are talking about resizing, we're still not doing proportion because there's no restriction on how we can pull it in vertical or horizontal lines. So that's another way of doing it. So if we were to go down here, just get rid of it again, and just paste it again. So we now have the full picture here. If I want to resize that down to say, it's now 1280 times 800 pixel, but I wanted that to be 600 pixel, what you can do is, while you have it all marked here, so you see that line, if you don't have it, as I said, go into con your select and then select all, right? You click the then resize button here, and we will then be able to do it proportionally. So you'll be able to do it percentage wise. Say you want to be 50%. Let's say 50 there. So it's actually going to be 50% smaller than the other one. And you see down here, maintain aspect ratio. So we'll keep. If I was to uncheck that, you could do the same sort of pulling it out in different angle and then stretching the image. But we don't want to do that. However, as I said, I wanted to do it 600 pixels. So to do it in pixels, you can click up here. So you select pixels instead. And then it's a vertical line you're interested in. So if I was to say 600 here and then maintain the ratio, then we would get 960 there. So if I click OK to this, see there, we now have the picture in perfect size, but a bit smaller as I wanted it. So that's it. Now, let's just undo that again. So, get the picture back in here again. So that's Control C, and uh, we got the picture in again by Control V. Maybe it went a bit quickly. So you can also paste from your computer. So you can use it down here if you have an image, and you can paste that in. So I'm not going to do that now. It's a bit self-explanatory that one. So in our selection tool, while we're going over that, we can do selections like this. So if we click over here, get rid of the selection. We can pull it. And we can then select a region like that. A region like that. The thing about it, paint is that it doesn't really work in layers as you might do in Photoshop. So if I was to select a region like this, and then how you see the cursor turning into four arrows here, and move it, I can move it around. However, if I was to click out here, I will no longer have access to it. So we need to keep that in mind you have to sort of come in and try to find where you had it to sort of get it to move it around again. So just going to undo that. Just keep that in mind. So say I wanted to select the kitten's head here, right? Well, that's not always going to work with a rectangle shape. However, there is a freeform tool in here. So you can click that and can draw around it. It's not going to be best because I'm going to be doing it quite quickly here like that. So we now got the kitten's head here. And we will then be able to move that. Like that. Gonna undo that. What you might also want is say you select the kitten's head here again. Let's do it quickly again. But really you don't want to be moving the kitten's head. What you would like to be moving is the body. So what you can do is you can go up here and you can say invert the selection. So you notice now when I move it, it's not the head, but the rest of the image I'm moving. Like that. Obviously, it doesn't look very good, but it's just for an example. Right, so as I said, we have gone over that one. And that's really the most important tools in here you're going to need. So, say I wanted more than one picture in here. How do we do that? Let's do a control A and get a picture again. And then let's do a proportional scale. So we say we want it down to be 50. 50 or 500. There we go. So we have the image here. But maybe we want to put it up here. Like that. So you can do that while it's selected. Remember, once you let it go, you'll have to sort of make the selection again to do it. So if we go back into our browser. And say we'll find another little cute kitten. 
Yeah, that one looks lovely. So let's copy that image. And we do then Control V in here again. So you see, here is an interesting thing that happens. You have your image here, but the image you're pasting in is larger than the image or the canvas. So it will be overlaid. So how do we get around that? Well, the trick is, don't click out there yet, because remember, once you let go of that, it's just going to override the other thing. So what you want to do is go into your selection and say, this is quite a large picture, so let's just make it 30. And there we go. And we have now resized that one. And then you can place your cute kitten there next to the other one. So what you could also do, if we do a Control V again, is we could do the same thing down here. You can get the corners and you can pull it. So say you have a corner down here and we could do that and move around. But first, just remember it's not proportional. All right, so I'm just gonna do this one again and I'm gonna do it down to 30. I was pretty happy with that. I have some cute kittens here. So I'm happy with that, it looks good. So that's your selection tools. And you're probably using them quite a bit to start a dead parts out of them. So what we want to do here is we're going to select them both and then we can move them over here and say, I don't want the canvas to be this big now because once you save the image, you don't want all this white space now. So what you can do is you can take the canvas and you can pull it over there. So we now have a canvas like that and we can then also do it down the bottom like that. However, before we go too far away from the selection, let's just go over some of the other things you can do with it once you have selected it. So that would be rotating and you can skew it as well. So let's just take the picture here again. And then in here, you'll notice we can skew it in different directions depending on what degree you put in. So maybe I want to put a 90 degree in. Oh, that might be going to be a bit too much. Let's do 45. And you will notice that the image can get this direction if you ever should need that. And the similar the other ones just work in another direction. So, however, in some cases you're probably going to run into that this image you have is not in the right direction. So you would want to rotate it. If you go in here, you will notice you can rotate it counterclockwise and clockwise. And you can also flip the image. So say I want the image to be upside down, sort of. I can do that. I can rotate it like that. And again, we can just move it over there. You can even take the other kitten here and move that further over. Like that. And maybe I want to pull that one over here. So there. Maybe just pull that one up there. So. Now I have a nice image here of kittens. So that's what you can do with your selection tools over here. And then you can then rotate and do whatever you want with them. So let's dig into the actually drawing parts of it once you're done editing it. So the first tool you will notice up here is your pencil, which is a free form tool. So you can draw like that with your pencil. And you can undo it again with your control C like that. And you undo it. To change the size of it, you do it over here. That's your size of your pencil you're using. So see, it's bigger now. So I want that size. But maybe you want to just change your color as well. So say I want the orange. I want to draw a hat here on the cat. There we go. Yeah, I'll have a hat on it. So, while that's all good, maybe you want some sort of other style than just the straight line. So if you go into brushes here, once you have your tool selected, you will notice there's different styles. This is your brush. Here you have calligraphy. Calligraphy again. An airbrush. Oil brush. Crayon. A marker. Natural pencil. And and that one is color watercolor brush. So these are going to give you sort of style when you're drawing with it. So you see my cursor changed here. So we do like that. And you can go up and change your color. I want to 
doing that? And you're free to go select and I'll say you want to use a crayon. Go like that. Just the crayon effect. Right, so I'm just going to undo that. So we have a pencil. We have a calligraphy. That's a lot of depending on which direction you take it. It will make like a curved line. Let's see here. Like that. So you can do an H there or something like that. And then you have the oil type of calligraphy. Okay, again, don't know where they're going to be using those. And the airbrush is just kind of. You probably play with that on uh, at some point. And then we have our oil brush and a marker. Say we want to highlight something. You want to highlight the ear up here. Like that. Did I change it? Yeah, I did. I didn't. Get a marker. So undo that. That's a marker. You see, it's a bit transparent, and so that was what I meant earlier. It's not really working with layers, but it is sort of working with layers because you can see it's sort of a layer above it, but you don't have access to the layer after you let go of it. So, say you've done this now, and you then go ahead and do this, you can go back and undo the purple part of it without having to undo this part first. So, I'll have to undo that and then undo that. Alright, so yeah, you can play around these. So you also notice that we have another color up here. So we use this one to select the first color here. We also have another color. That one will become important in a little bit, so don't worry about that for, for now. But let's just have a look at the colors while we're talking about this brush. So you can edit your colors up here. So say you have this lime green, but you want to edit it a bit. So you can click edit your color. And you can move it around here. And then what you can do is you can add that color to your palette up here. So if I click that, you now see I now access to it here. Like that. And what that does is means that I can now go back and use it. So you want to use it brown and I can get that exact color back again. If you ever need that. Alright, so that is pretty much your brush. So you click this icon up here, you get your paint bucket. And you notice we still have this color selector. So if I click somewhere here, you notice there's not a huge difference. That's because it's trying to fill in those little pixels. However, if I was to do selection and press the delete key, and then take this bucket and click that, it will try to fill out where the lines go. So it will try to work out where to fill out that area so what you could do is you could do like this and go back to your bucket again and fill that out like that all right so talking about this that comes more interesting what you actually start working with the shapes so if i was to draw a shape just move on don't worry we get back to the text as well so we draw a shape like that, like that. I can then get a bucket and it will then be able to work out from that that this is the area to fill it out. So but we still gonna have the problem down here that there's a lot of different pixel colors in here and it's gonna try to fill out the same sort of color of pixels. So you won't just be able to fill that out without actually making the same tone. So we can do it like that. So if I want us to now to do another paint here. It won't remember before but it will recolor the whole thing like that. So I'm going to undo that again. So there we go. Right, so before we go on to the sh actual shapes here, well, let's just have a look at the text tool. So if you click the text tool up here, you notice that you get this cursor down here. It changes and you can kind of drag it where you want it. So if I was to type anything in here now, it would get the color of blue. Yeah. So if I type kitten, you notice I get kitten written down here. What you can then do with this text is you can highlight it by holding down the left key on your mouse and you drag it over and you can then change it here like that. 
you will notice that in here in the selection that is the selection is not quite big enough so what I can do is I can drag it out like that and if I then click in again here you can move the highlight now what's quite interesting is about this is if I was to write more than one word so what we're gonna write there this kitten maybe so we write this kitten this is very cute so what you notice here is they get pushed down on the next line depending on where you put your selection so if I was to do this I can do it all the way in there and I can then drag it down now you see you can get all the words onto the same like that so if I want it to be one line I can drag it out there again and I can mark it all again and I can then click a green color so we now got green maybe I want it to be orange what I can also do is I can make it bold or make it italic or I can underline it or I can put a line through it so you see you can underline it you can make it bold and you can make it italic and put a line through it sort of like seeing this is no longer say I want to do like that it's no longer called a kitten maybe it's a dog or something so if I do this again and then just click them all off again there and then just grab this one click like that so that's your text tools but you can also change the actual font of it so you see you have a lot of fonts available here so see you click the baron new font so it's not in the scope of on how to of scope of this tutorial on how to install fonts but if there should be any request on how to do that uh, let me know and i'll do it for you so that's your font and as before if you were to click out here you no longer have access to it however what you will have access to is say as we did before because this is now a solid color i can go in and do that but please note that if you were to zoom in so let's just see down here it's your zoom tool or you can also hold your control key in and scroll in with your mouse like that but if you were to zoom in you will notice that the outline here is not getting the color and that's because that when you do the text is that it's gonna have a different tone just in the out edge out of the edges just to make it sort of more soft on the screen and just give it a soft look I don't know how you wanna say that so the best thing is to do just take choose the color when you're actually doing it so we just zoom out here again so you see zoom out in and out there so if I undo that so we now have a cute kitten here get a bit of that as well so you could do it like that write something there so just anything here and then we can make an other selection down here and we can change the color of it what you can also do is when you select it like that is you can choose between these so if you notice here I will change the background color as we were talking about before so if I was to change that so you click on that color first and click on that color and say I want it to be green so now when I write I get green text and orange background but I want it to be uh, transparent so there we go and I will roast that that but uh, I was not meant to write that so that's your text tool so say you have something on here we done a brush here and I'm not happy with that however I'm planning on making that a white background so what you could do is you could go in and get your eraser tool and you will notice what happens here is it gets orange and why does it get orange it's because it's not really as I said working as in layers as much so it's gonna take your background color so if I was to select white you sort of get the effect that it's erasing it but in theory it's more sort of painting it white if that makes sense so there we go there's your eraser right so then you have your color picker your color picker works with your colors over here say I want the text 
to be this pink down here to make it look apart. So let's just get rid of it. So if I did the color picker, I click down here. I want that sort of. Oh, sorry. Let's get the color picker and get that pink, and then go in here. Oh, sorry. It, we are on the wrong one here. You select that one and then go in there. You then get your color showing up here. And you click OK. And we can then go right again. And we can then say kittens. So that's a way you can get sort of a color from an image and then get your same color into your font. What's also worth noting why we are in editing color in here is the values down here. They may seem a bit confusing, but they're not really that confusing. This is your hue, and then here's your saturation, and here's your luminosity. However, you probably heard of the RGB. So you have a number from the 1 to 255 in each of these. So you will notice when I change it, these numbers change. So if you ever need to sort of give someone the color, you can take these different colors values here and pass on and they will know exactly which color you're talking about. Right, so that's the main tools, but there's a magnifying glass left. And it's essentially a bit of the same as what we did down here with zoom in and out. So one did hundred percent. But with a magnifying tool you can select a certain thing to zoom in on. So I want to zoom in on the eye here. You can see the beautiful eyes of the kitten. So that is the magnifying glass. Let's zoom out here again. It's not really any more to that. Let's jump into the shapes. So the shapes are shapes you can draw and they will still depend on say the size here we choose and which color you choose. So if I click here and hold down my mouse key, so that's your left mouse key, I can drag it out and you can then move it afterwards like that. I can make a new one like that. I can move it a bit and then click somewhere else to get rid of it and it's now a completed line so I'm just gonna undo that so you also have a cur curve one say I want it to curve around here I can then click there and drag it over there and then if I click in the middle here and hold my key mouse key down again I can sort of pull it up to create this sort of curve I can move it to the side so there so now it runs around the, the belly of the cat Let's get rid of that again. We also have a circular one, so we can create circles and we can move it up again. And the way I do this is just the dragging. So you just hold the key down and drag it out to create the shape. Just remember once again, I said once you let it go, you can't really get hold of it again. So make sure you do it like that. And then we got a square. So that's just a square. So what's interesting about these shapes is that we can actually fill the inside of them so you notice there's a fill option up here so you can do a solid or we have access to similar sort of styles that we used on a brush pencil brush so I want a solid color and it will be using the background color here so if I chose that I can then sort of do this and then I wanted to draw another one or another one on top of it and you can sort of build it up like that and then you could then go in and say paint bucket and I wanted to paint all these certain colors like that. So there you go. That's that concept. What you also notice there's also one called outline. So if I was to say take this one the square again, and then we have the same sort of thing. So I wanted to outline of the box to be made with crayon, but I wanted it to be solid inside. Or maybe I wanted it to be oil inside. There you go. Then we got one with rounded corners. So we've got rounded corners there. You can then put some text inside it. Saying hello. There we go. Just undo that. Just click the escape key to get out of it. So the next one is actually quite interesting because you can draw your own shape. So if I click down here and hold the key down again, I do it like this. And I let go, and then you can do again similar pull like that, like that, like that, and like that. You notice down here that we still don't have that outline. What we can then do is click over here, and it's sort of going to connect it. And once you do that, you've got the shape to work with. So you can do it like this, 
And again, you can change the outline and the fill. So that's that one. So we're going to go over these quite quickly. So there's triangular, and then there's another triangular shape, and you can obviously rotate them and things like that. But these are just different shapes. If you want arrows, you have different arrows up and down. You have a star, oh, sorry. You have your speech bubble. You have board. Have a bit of lightning. Got a clean heart there. So if you want to change the color in that, there we go. So that's your main shapes. Now, we've been placing these things sort of just randomly over everywhere. So what if I wanted to sort of be working from a more grid based view? Then I can go into view. And you know you have a zoom out in a similar as before. But we can then click the guidelines and you notice we get the squares on here. So if we go back again, we will then be able to zoom in and we can then say go up here and select our little drawing tool here. I can click there and I can then pull it over to that point and say I want it to go exactly to there. So there. So there you have it. That's how you would draw a shape that uses straight lines. So say I wanted to do something else. I can just do it on top of again. Like there. And there we go. So that's your grid. And you can get rid of that by clicking your grid guidelines over there. And the status bar would just be the one in a button. So just keep that on if you want. If it's taking up space, then obviously don't. So you can also do rulers. So we get the measurement. So as we move around, if you have to work on a specific size where you want a certain things to sit, say I want it to be sitting up 50 out here. If I want some text to be sitting there, I can place it like there. I'm gonna take that off. So that's the important part of those. Now let's have a look at something else, like actually in a working example. So what I would do is I will close this down. I'm not gonna save it. And we're then gonna open an image. So you have downloaded an image onto my computer here. You can then right click and choose what you want to open with it with. So if I go down to open with, and then you've got paint here. So here we have a kitten. So I want to do something with that. I want to write some text. I want to resize it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna resize it to 50% of it. All right. But then I also want some text above there, but you will notice that we can't actually do that it's because this image is sitting all the way at the top. So what you can do is you can expand the canvas down here. So just pull that down. It's a bit tedious, but there you go. Right, and then we want to select it. So I'm just going to do Control A to select it all, and then we can drag it down, down there. So I want some text up there, but I want that color up there to be sort of similar to there. So I can use my color picker, and can then go to my paint bucket. You notice the color change over here, and click there. So this is not the best example, but you get the point. So what you can then do is say, I want some white text up here. And then we want to write, hello. And you notice it jumped down from to the next line and I'm not interested in that. Go there. So you also notice that you can sort of align it in the middle. So if you wanted it to be in the middle, you could bring it as close as possible and sort of bring it in based on your size up here in the top. So that's about there. I'm just going to calculate that right now. Somewhere around there. And then you can click out here. And we now have a little kitten picture. So what about if I wanted to paint something? That's another example. So you just get rid of the kitten here. Just mark it all and you click your delete key. 
so it's just the one up in the uh, just above your backspace key so say I wanted to paint a little house and I wanted to do it in let's do it in orange actually let's do it in green let's paint a green house so we'll start off with a square and then I will choose what sort of outline I want or maybe I don't want an outline at all so and I want to do the crayon so we'll do like that Oh, and see what's happened here. The foreground is my outline. So the one I want to change to green is this one. So there we go. So, and then on top of that, I then want a roof. So we're going to make a red roof, orange roof maybe. So remember, we have no outline here, so it doesn't matter. So we do like that. And then maybe want the window in it. So let's get the blue one. There we go. But I'm not quite happy with that. Because now we have that in the back. So let's do a selection instead. Or you could do it with a square and change it to a solid color. But I'm going to make the selection and click the delete key. And then I'm going to make another uneven lovely window here. So let's get a door in as well. Make a brown door. And we do a similar thing. Right, so then we have a little house. So maybe I wanted to paint some grass, so we can do it like that. Yeah, or maybe I want it to be in a similar fashion as the other one. So, where were we? I mean, crayon. Crayon, where well, did you hide? There, well, so we got some grass. Now, so let's look at this fantastic picture here. We want to save it. So what you do is you go up to File, and you see you can create a new, you can open it, and you can save it, and you can save as, and you can send it as an email. However, what we're interested in is this one. We want to save as. So you have a few options available here. So you, what you're probably going to be using most, unless you're going to be using Opacity, then you're going to be saving as a JPEG. If you want to save transparency in a picture, say you opened a PNG file. So if I was to open a PNG file that had some transparency in it and I saved it as a JPEG, what would happen is it would lose the transparency. So open a PNG and you want to save it as a PNG to save the transparency with it. Otherwise that transparency would just be changed out to white. However, what you probably be most likely be saving images and if there's no transparency is your JPEG because it will result in a smaller file. So if I check that one and you can then see you can then save it as cat and I want to save it as cat2 here. Great naming convention. There we go. And you will then notice if I was to go out here we have a cat2 saved there on our desktop. I think that's pretty much everything for this tutorial about paint. If you have any questions, then just leave a question in the comments. And uh, hopefully you enjoyed the tutorial and you can get started with paint. As I said, one of the main uses of paint is really if you want to edit something quickly, you just open paint quickly and you can just say resize it like this. And I want it, I need a picture in 400 like that. And you just click Control S to save. And you can then close again and your picture is now in 400 pixels so the advantage here is if you were to start a large program like photoshop it would still be starting up by the time that you actually resize this picture so if i hover over here you see it's 400 pixels there, there so. all right so i'll see you in the next video and don't forget to subscribe and like the video